عليكم ورحمة الله طبعا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحب أشكر أخي وحبيبي المجتمع اللي أعطاني فرصة أن ألتقي بكم وأقدم أقدم برزنتيشن على الرنين باعتبار يعني أرتبط الماراثون تبع الـ AK تبع الـ Bank of America So yeah, we, have, we just have uh, an overview on the races uh, These are like why we should run the questions are why why running? What do I need to run? Uh, what kind of shoes should I wear? Stretching routine. Uh, how to sign up for a race and popular races in Chicago? How to train for a race and trips useful and useful apps and legs. So why running? Uh, first of all, uh, it helps in burn calories and lose uh, loss weight, increase your fitness level. Uh, turn down the pressure on stress, especially from steps. I mean, some of these, you know. So uh, and get energy, uh, energy boost. Morning runs are the best. Uh, no need for gym access. Uh, if you don't have any uh, place to do type to run or to do exercise, you can just do it anywhere. Uh, but of course, in spring, summer, and fall, it's probably it's even you get frozen. Uh, and you can do it anywhere. That's why your shoes are on. Uh, the good running shoes are like Nike, Asics, Adidas, and New Balance, uh, which is around like uh, $70 to $120. Um, and of course, you need comfortable running clothes. Uh, you have to add layers in cold weather uh, from sport authority or road uh, runners or factory outlets. Uh, sport uh, headset just, uh, just to, to distract you and give yourself a boost for music or anything you prefer, which is optional. Uh, and you need a water bottle for hydration. Uh, depends on your food shape, weight, desired phase for a nation, and gait type, uh, like your personal biomechanics. And you can uh, know by doing a free run test in many stores in Chicago, like Nike, uh, uh, New Balance, Roadrunners, Adidas. Uh, Roadrunner stores have 90 days return policy for the shoes. Uh, only if you are a VIP member, uh, around four dollars for the first year. If you don't like it, you can return it or for exchange or, or refund. Uh, online stores, online and store policy for test runner on this link, roadrunnersstores.com. Here are some uh, stretching uh, exercises you need uh, to do before running, of course which is basically a uh, start from the neck, the arms, your head, your ankle, uh, like all joints, you yeah, have just to do some stretches in order to avoid uh, injuries, traumas, and muscle spasm. Uh, you can have a look on them. Here's some, uh, the core, the hip, these are all your muscles of the... Why should we do uh, stretch after? After to uh, to improve blood supply to the muscles to prevent like uh, spasm and cramps. So, uh, how to sign up for a race? Uh, there are there is site which is carirun.org. Uh, all Chicago races are all year round. You can find them there. Uh, every weekend there is a race. Uh, click on find race section. Choose your preferred distance, dates, and area. And then you can click search, then click on desired phrase and follow just the instructions. And of course, they are all not for free. Like some, some of them are for, for free, but like almost all you have to pay some uh, fees you know, for that. Uh, early registration, cheaper fees always. Uh, these are some popular races in Chicago. Uh, Bank of America, Sean Workshop, all eight kilos. This is the one I did. Uh, which was really interesting. Uh, there is Chicago Half Marathon, uh, 21.5 kilo kilometers. Bank of America Chicago Marathon, 24.42 in October. And Hot Chocolate Race, just 15 kilos in November. Training for the race. Uh, of course, you have to train for a race very well. Uh, there are many websites that offer free six to eight week training schedules. Uh, or you can use the apps that have features of coach training. Uh, you have to start with the minimum running distances, like 5K race, and then you can add miles slowly 
at your run. If you never run before, start with, zero, uh, with a 0 0.5 mile and then add 10 to 15% weekly or every other week. Uh, here are some tips for running. Whenever you compare your distance and speed with others, you just challenge yourself. Always, always, always hydrate yourself. Uh, well, of course, with water or some electrolyte water. Uh, always stretch, stretch before and after you run. Warm up before you run. It's totally okay to walk through your run to catch your breath. Uh, try to run with a running partner or sign up in a meet here of a group. Uh, like I, I did, I, uh, I signed up for uh, our marathon in September and I joined the meet up group. So uh, we'll be running a group to do it better than we just run out. Mm -hmm. Uh, check the weather before you run to wear accordingly. Uh, do a sport physical with your primary care physician before you engage in any sport. Uh, here are some applications that you might need. The best applications for runner, uh, for running in, uh, on iOS or Android are Nike Plus Running, free training schedule feature for races, run keyboard, my map run, uh, run plastic. Uh, for diet also, there, are, uh, there is a uh, it which is uh, for uh, iOS and Android. You can uh, log your activity and calorie, uh, calorie intake. And here there are some useful links you can use to for, for, for running the marathon. And thank you for questions. Please do not hesitate to contact me or Dr. Sohei Rufai uh, right in the subject, subject line, so we did. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم اشكركم اول شيء على الحضور اشكركم جدا شخص شخص طبعا الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله احنا يعني انا لي هنا في شيكاغو تقريبا سنتين وجربت اللي هو اروح لشيكاغو بولز يعني كل الناس بيقول لي روح 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 اقول ايش خليني اذاكر ماني فاضل هذا الشيء ولما رحت صراحه كانت اكسبيرينس مره حلو فحابب انكم يعني تجربوه. في البداية طبعا احنا بنتكلم اليوم عن اللي هو ستيب اب فور تو امريكان سبورتس. شكرا للدكتور احمد طالب، شكرا للدكتور صهيب الرفاعي، شكرا لكابتن ستاف، ذي بن هيلبفول. اند ذي هيلب مي الات بريبيرينج فور ذا فور ذا برزنتيشن. هير ان شيكاغو وي هاف لايك five teams or um, two um, baseball teams and one hockey, one American football, and of course the famous uh, Chicago Bulls. Um, uh, Chicago Bears are the, the team uh, that plays uh, American football, and uh, Chicago Cubs are the uh, baseball team on the north side. Uh, White Sox are the team in the south side, uh, baseball too, and they were champions last year. Champions, the uh, uh, Chicago uh, Blackhawks. Um, they were the champion last year for the for the ice hockey game, which is Stan Stanley Cup. You should present. <laughs> That's good. Um, why should we know about it? Um, first of all, it's it's about culture. Every Sunday morning, you'll have like the family would go out and just to grab their batters, the, the bat and the ball, or sometimes they will go and to, a, to, a, to an open field and they play the American football there. So for them, it's like something that they do very often. And when it's like winter, they will go to the frozen like rivers or like lakes and they will play the ice hockey. So it would give us like more to be more involved in the culture and more involved in conversations with with our patients and uh, with our like program directors. Um, and you know Abdurrahman Fagi, he told us about his story and how how he learned a lot of, about hockey, and and it was like something that that was positive for him that he's coping with, with the culture there. Um, and actually. Have, I, I, I had fun uh, learning these sports, actually preparing for this presentation. 
I had fun um, learning something new, and you will see you will see it on the way. Um, more attached to the patients and colleagues, they would say the first thing after good morning would be like, "How was the last night game? How do you find it?" And this would be like an opener for the for the day. If you didn't answer, it would be like, um, "Was there a game? I don't know." And it would be like, uh, it will give uh, not a bad impression, but it will not gain you the point of of getting involved in the position. Take it, take it easy. Um, um, actually, and having fun during the breaks, like we learned here, like thanks to Muhammad Tlaib, his his main saying is um, uh, study hard and break harder. This is really important. You have to study hard and break harder uh, to get like refreshed. Then when you go back to to the uh, to the mode of study, um, should I play it to know it? Uh, I would say no, because most of soccer, like I, I play soccer often, so for soccer, it would be fine to to watch often and know what is offside, what is the foul, what is the, how the, get, the goal is scored, what is the corner, and these are things that you can, you can get in through watching and asking. So it's, it's exactly the same for the other sports. It's not, it's not really that difficult. Just get, get there and ask questions. Ask why did the, the, the ref whistle? Why is this play is relevant? Who is that player? Everyone is shouting. Everyone is booing. So these are the things that would get you to uh, to get more more knowledge about the the game. Um, what to expect in the game? Actually, I would advise you to go to the arena. Don't watch it at home uh, because when you watch it at home, there will be like a lot of ads, and we have to understand something here. These are a huge franchise that is sponsored by companies. So don't be surprised if you have like plenty of ads. That's the way they make money. That's the way they make money. Uh, and that's why you will see like a lot of ads. And there is, they added the timeouts to the basketball just for that. So there is a lot of timeouts and they will use it through for, for the ads. And uh, in the Super Bowl, I don't know, the second would be like for thousands and thousands of dollars for only one second for me, or ten seconds for me, mm -hmm. uh, during the break. <clears throat> um, how the team select the players? I came from Saudi, and I know like if you play well in the street, and you get a chance to go to, the, to a team, an Ittihad, or, or Al Ahli, or Hilal, it would be like very easy. You have to know someone to pick you up there, but here it's like it's totally different. They should know you from from your high school or from your college. So this is a knowledge part. It's like an education. You have to be educated to to get there. I don't know if you have something to add here. What sport are you talking about right now? Any. Uh, most likely it's American football. Football. Yeah. Draft's a big deal. Uh, should I talk about it? Um, uh, NFL drafts, yeah, it's like a, it's like a big deal in America. It's like uh, almost as big as football itself. You know, a lot of uh, Americans follow it. Um, kind of a lot of people follow it to see who they think is going to be drafted. So you know, every year we have the football draft. Similarly, of the NBA draft as well. Um, so leading up to draft day, let's say for example, like a lot of the NFL um, team owners and the coaches, <laughs> um, uh, you know, they will like have people that they think that they want to select for the draft and each year, like um, a certain team will have like their number in the draft. I don't know how they come up with the number of, so let's say that Chicago Bears, for example, uh, whatever the reason may be, maybe they're, they're number two to select their people in the draft. And then um, there's a pool of players, either mm -hmm. from, from college, not necessarily always from college, in basketball, it's not always from college. Um, and then they pick in the draft and then mm -hmm. they select their team that way, um, yeah. basically. I mean, there's not really much more to it, um, but it's a big deal because, you know, if you're following the Bears, let's say you really like a certain player from college and there's rumors that 
uh, we're going to get this player this year. You know, everyone really follows the draft, and it's really they really care. And I don't know if you guys know what fantasy football is. Fantasy football. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Fantasy football. Fantasy football. It's like something you would uh, you would pick your players well, it's online, the same thing. and yeah, it's yeah. like something online. You do. You, select it. you, you build select up your team. And we played PlayStation, guys. Yeah, it's like it's like that. It's like it's the like, same. You build like, your team, you see the results, and no, but Americans are like obsessed mm -hmm. with fantasy football. Yeah. obsessed. Mm -hmm. And it's the same sort of sort of thing. Pick your own team in the draft, and we you follow the draft just like real NFL, and then you select your own team mm -hmm. from the draft that year. So this is like a big deal. So on draft day, well, draft day, in NF in American football is like yeah, was last week. It's a big deal. I think no, it was last week. I, Go ahead. I, I don't know that information. I'm just kind of, I told yeah, my chime what, in what yeah. I knew. Um, that's it. Some of the NBA, you're, you're selected from the draft, not necessarily. Like LeBron James, for example, you know, everyone thinks he's so awesome, he's so good. He was drafted right out of high school. He never went to college because apparently he's that amazing. Um, you know, and some want the education, want to go. But they're not really educated. They're, they're athletes. They know they're going to get drafted into the NBA. Um, yeah, but nice. at least they have to finish high yeah. school. Yeah, but it, you know, sometimes it's a personal choice. Some people want to stay in college because you get better each year you play in NBA. Mm -hmm. College as well. College football is a, is a, and college basketball is a big deal too. Mm -hmm. So, that's really all I've got to say. And then, yeah, you get a contract. Uh, I don't know how long it is, but you get a contract with a team. And then at the end of your contract, you become a free agent. And then you get to pick mm -hmm. your new team, which mm -hmm. is a big deal too in America. Like LeBron James, he picked the Miami Heat because he was a free agent. Mm -hmm. And like all of America cared, you know, people care. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm going to keep talking for a second because you guys should know this. Yeah, Carmel, yeah. Carmelo Anthony, for example, mm -hmm. he's a basketball player. He plays for the Knicks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? He's a, he's a famous. He's a free agent this year. That means his contract with the Knicks is up. So now, what's everyone talking about? Where is he going to go? Yeah. What team is he going to pick? Because all the it's like it's like business. Everyone's trying to take him. Everyone wants to, who's which team is he going to go to? Who's going to pay him the most money? And there's even rumors maybe he'll come to the Bulls. Doubt he will. So again, it's about money and who can afford them and, and stuff like that. But when people become free agents, if they're popular, it's a big deal. Yeah. So this is pretty much about the deal and the, the contract. <laughs> How so much money do they? Oh, like so million. much money. Millions. How much do they make? It's it's <laughs> sickening. How much money? Um, I was telling them actually. I, I learned this. The, the number one NBA player. Does anyone want to guess the top top paid NBA? Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. It is Kobe, Kobe. Bryant. It yeah. is Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Bryant. Yeah. It is. He's yeah, a top he franchise name he's for a, the Lakers. Yeah. He, he's the highest paid player, and again, it just comes down to contract. But I think his is like, someone Google it. I, I don't know, but it's like millions. It's a lot. I mean, yeah, people make a lot of money, and it's like first time right here is like fifteen million dollars for a four year contract, something like that. Sports in America. I mean, the amount of money. Yeah. yeah. Voted. Yeah. Yeah, you can make money from that once you are an athlete and you are like uh, they're very, very two, rich. two meters long. <laughs> you can go high, you can go there. Um, okay. So an overview for the for the sports. We will talk about the time, the equipments, how to play, like very simple way of going through it, and who wins, of course. How do you get the score? How do you get the these? Um, who wins by the end of it? And uh, famous players, we will go through them, and part of culture. Okay. So, for the equipment for basketball, you need a hoop <laughs> and a basket. That's it. Um, for for baseball, you have like a lot of stuff you have to get, and also the hat that will cover cover your head and ear for the for the hitter. Um, and this is the catcher. The catcher stuff, it's like you will get a ball that travels 100 miles per hour. So you have to protect yourself from that. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the hockey kit. You can you can see how, how much you have to wear just to play hockey. It's like so you have to protect yourself from falling in the ice, uh, getting a hit by the stick of your opponent. And if you are a keeper, believe me, you will look a giant. <laughs> um, this is a clip about the American football. I find it useful, hopefully you will. Sorry.
A guide to American football for liberals, ladies, and limeys. The story of American football is the story of America herself. A tale of taking other people's land by force. Each Sunday from September to February, the great cities of America send forth their champions. Teams named in honor of fierce creatures, mythical deities, local industries, and occasionally antiquated racial slurs. Set forth to do battle for four 15-minute quarters. Plus halftime, plus quarter period stoppages, plus two-minute warnings, plus six timeouts per team, plus general play stoppages, injuries, and air breaks. And all for the control of 100 yards of freshly cut American Astroturf, where each blade of grass stands for freedom. After the player introductions, the anthems, the flyovers, the coaches' handshakes, and the coin toss, the two teams line up for the kickoff. And once the ball has been returned, each team's 11 offensive players take the field against their 11 defensive adversaries. They have four opportunities or downs to advance the pigskin 10 yards down the field, and in doing so, earn another four precious downs. Before each snap, the coach and quarterback fly the scheme to move the ball forward. Either handed it off to the running backs to rush the ball along the ground, or by passing it through the air to the receivers. Meanwhile, the opposition defense do their utmost to tackle players with the ball and crush any such advance. Should the offense make it all the way to the promised land of the end zone, the scoring player will calmly hand the ball to the referee as his team receives six golden points with the opportunity for an extra point if they kick the ball through the post. However, if the defense prevail and halt the drive toward the goal line, the team with the ball may elect to punt the ball down the field to the opposition, or, if within range, attempt a three-point field goal. The defensive team can score as well, should they manage to tackle the player with the ball in his own end zone, thus scoring a two-point safety. And barring a few hundred pages of regulatory minutia, it's just that simple, as is the league structure itself. The 32 teams of the National Football League are split into the American and National Conferences. These are further divided into four regional divisions. At the end of the 16-game season, the teams with the best record from each division, plus the two wildcard teams with the next best records in each conference, enter the playoffs. The winners of the wildcard card games they go on to play in the divisional round, the winners of which, in turn, advance to their American and National Conference games. Finally, the two most badass teams in the NFL face off with the Vince Lombardi Trophy and the greatest sporting event in history, the Super Bowl. To the winners, championship rings, tickets to Disneyland, a new pickup truck, and immortality. <laughs> I find it like this is the most helpful video for help understanding. It was very comprehensive um, and telling you how it works. So um, I know about football. If anyone has any questions about yeah, sports. should we repeat it again? No, I mean not for me. <laughs> Just, <laughs> so uh, the main event in American football it's uh, is the Super Bowl. It's like two champions, they play only one game. It's not a playoff, it's only one game. Uh, the winner gets the trophy for the, for the Super Bowl. Um, everything actually, the, the clock stops that day. <laughs> Every, everything is watching that event. Everything is waiting for that event uh, to happen. So um, that's pretty much it for the, um, for the Super Bowl. Um, our team here uh, in Chicago is the Bears. They have like famous players. This is Cutler. Um, this is a player who was Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler. Yeah, Jay Cutler. Um, okay. Born uh, 1983. Uh, first played with the Denver Broncos, uh, 2006, and then he he was traded to the Bears. It was in our contract, so this is something different. It's it's a trade in the uh, for the draft, so you get a spot and you get a player. So, for example, when you have like um, you are the first pick for this year, people will would like try to 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 take from you the the first pick and give you some other players. And the quarterbacks are the most important players in the um, mm -hmm. in the offensive. Team. Uh, so that that wa that way he was drafted and they paid like a lot of, like gave them um, two picks for the next year and two players so it was like um, something like mm -hmm. different uh, the thing is he have he have uh, type 1 diabetes he used insulin all the time and he was born to injuries ankle injuries groin injuries 
every now and then he had like issue with injuries. But he has like he had um, a great numbers. So he completed so many passes. There are, there was no interceptions, and it was it was really impressive. Um, so uh, before he got to the to the Bears. And uh, these are like other players. Do you know the names? I, I, I don't know. No. No, I'm just we need Chelsea. Chelsea? No. Um, okay. Injuries. Um, uh, really, it's, there, there's like a career ending injuries mm -hmm. uh, in the American football. But the issue for, for the injuries now is like the, the, uh, head, the head trauma and the brain concussions. It's really like raising something um, among the community of the NFL. And, uh, and uh, everyone is writing about it. Doctors are worried about it. And there's a player, I, I don't know his name, he, he just gave himself for the studies, um, dedicated himself for, for the studies because he had like a lot of uh, uh, head, head injuries. So these are like places of like, Imagine 150 kilogram running in speed and just and th they are running in different direction and they just crash on each other. This is really hard. It would be really hard. And also the just let me demonstrate the uh, brain injuries or the ice hockey. Uh, any question before we go? Before we move on, go ahead. Uh, actually, uh, just maybe three three weeks ago, I watched uh, the movie Draft Day. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah? It was good because I, I didn't have any idea about, uh, about the American football. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I recommend it for people who want to. The draft, yeah, the draft Day. Draft Day. Yeah, it's, it's a good movie. Yeah, I watched it's it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah it's a good movie. And it, to give an idea about what's happening in the draft mm -hmm. mm -hmm. exactly. And can I chime in too? Sure. Sorry, I, sure, I like to raise my hand. But yeah. also too, like you'll notice too, like different parts of America, like for example, Chicago is huge with college football too, so not just like NFL, it's a big deal, but um, in like the Midwest, so there's a lot of like, um, you know, a lot of open fields, a lot of small t like small towns, and you'll notice there's a lot of like big colleges around here, so a lot of college teams, so it's like really, really popular in Chicago, but like where I'm from in New York, for example, no one cares at all about college football because why it's New York City. Where, where's our big college around the New York area where everyone's playing football? It really doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So it, it's even really regional, even in the United States. Some parts of America really love college football and some really, really love NFL or national football. I mean, everyone loves football. Football is like, but college football here is a really big deal in Chicago. And you'll notice mm -hmm. that like, I'm just saying for you guys, like you should really go, because even when I first moved to Chicago, for me it was a culture shock. It was like, what's with all, but you'll notice you'll go by certain restaurants or certain bars and they'll have flags, so they'll have like signs outside the bar. It's because they're all affiliated with a certain college team. Mm -hmm. um, so if you get familiar with that, follow a team. That's what I did when I first moved here. Mm -hmm. I, like Notre Dame, for example, they're a, they're a college in Indiana. I've always liked them since I was a kid. So I got here and I looked up like what restaurants and bars are affiliated with. Um, that team, and then you go, and it's like mm -hmm. a really big deal. Uh, on, so college football is on Saturday, or, uh, NFL, national football is on Sunday. So, uh, anyway, it just it's like a green thing. I don't know. Huh? We'll get it again. And um, and um, they were the defending champion. They are the defending champion now. Uh, these are famous players. Uh, the goalie, look at the goalie. How how is he like wearing everything? <laughs> Um, it's like five skaters uh, with a hockey puck. It's not a ball. It's something we will we'll show you too. Um, and it's it's about finding the net and score the goal. Um, and whoever like score more, they get the the uh, uh, the win. This is how it looks. I don't know if you can see the the glass or the plastic mm -hmm. here, the barrier mm -hmm. that protect the um, the uh, the audience. About them. They will beat themselves here. <laughs> a lot of fights. Um, this is the buck. This is the buck. I don't know how to explain it, but it was interesting for me to, to see it first time. So, and it's like uh, a huge thing also in the, in the it's an Olympic game too. Mm -hmm. um, and um, 
It was like this is America and Canada. They were playing last, last, uh, the last Olympic game they played in the playoff, like for the the court, the semifinals, and Canada won. Canada won. Uh, this is about the injuries. They they have like huge fights. It's known for its fight and it's so aggressive game. Uh, when it's like get off the uh, the the, uh, the control out of control, it would be a disaster. Um, like both teams would go in a fight, and you see like there's two like wise guys. <laughs> like they are just standing there waiting for the fight to be over. Um, for baseball, I would. I would recommend you to watch this. It's it's a long one, but I learned from it a lot. So, just, it's a script. It's more than a game, it's baseball. One of my first times to an American baseball game was at the invitation of some friends to go out and watch the Brewers at Miller Stadium in Milwaukee. For an American, that game brings them back to their childhood, when they could get together with friends and family, hit the ball, and run the bases. It seemed like there was a fanfare to rival any national holiday, which is an oddity for some, but for Americans, this is their pastime. And every game is a chance to see these sometimes larger than life athletes hit farther and reach higher. Every sport has its pinnacle, but none is coveted as baseball's World Series, a best of seven series that's played between the American League and National League. This is the annual culmination of 162 regular season games for Major League Baseball to be crowned world champions. From an outsider looking in, baseball appeared simple enough. A pitcher throws the ball at the home plate, the other team's batter is attempts to hit the ball and run around the field. But three strikes puts the batter out, three outs and the team switch. As Europeans generally prefer simple sports with easy rules and as few breaks as possible. You know, like cricket. Well, I guess only the English like cricket and we're not really Europeans. On the edge of their seats, baseball fans cheer, sing, chant, and have pitch after pitch to quench their thirst. A near 100 miles an hour fastball hits the glove, another out. There was obviously more to this game, so here's what a game looked like to me the first four innings of the game. Each man that's on the side that's up, line up, and one by one go out to home plate. The men who are out try to get him out, and when he is out, he goes in the dugout, and the man on the deck is up, followed by the man in the hole. When they are all out, the side that's out comes in, and the side that's up goes out, and tries to get those coming in out. Did you understand anything? No. no. Me neither. I can explain it. Okay, go ahead. Do you want me to explain it a little bit? Are you guys interested? Yes, please. Yeah. We are. Okay. Um, so, I, it's, okay. So, has anyone here been to a baseball game? Have you seen a baseball field? Yeah. It's like a shape like a diamond, okay? So it's a, so there's basically there's four bases. I don't want to like. First base, second base, third base, home, okay? This is the pitcher, this is the catcher, okay? So in my opinion, the pitcher's most important thing. So this pitcher has to go up there, and they have to try to pitch, throw the ball as straight as they can here, so that the batter can hit it. Okay? If they get it straight and the batter swings but misses, it's a strike. But if the pitcher eh, and doesn't hit it right where it's supposed to, it's mm -hmm. considered a ball because they didn't they didn't they didn't throw it the way they're supposed to. Okay. So if you're here, you get three strikes. You can sing, you can either swing three times and miss, or he throws it perfectly, but this guy doesn't swing, it's still a strike. You get three strikes and you're out. Okay? Or four balls. Balls means that the pitch, pitcher throws it, but throws it back. Throws it over here, or just doesn't throw it exactly the way it can, and then the batter decides not to hit it. Okay, you can decide not to hit it if it's a crappy throw. Okay, you're allowed four times of getting a crappy throw. If you decide not to hit it, they call that four balls, and then you can walk to first base without ever having to hit the ball. Okay, does that make sense? That's the, that's the first round. That's a big deal. The pitcher is a big deal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Especially maple. Um, but of course, if you hit it, okay. Now, when you go to a, um, a baseball field, you'll notice there's like foul poles, mm -hmm. certain corners of the field. Okay. So you have to hit the ball within a certain area. If you hit it outside of that area, it's considered a foul. 
doesn't count. So you, I also have to watch where you're hitting the ball, okay? So if you keep hitting it and you hit it like where over the field is, that's considered a home run. No one can catch it. Then you, you run around, you score a point, or you just hit it. The goal is to have one of these people not catch it. You do not want them to catch it. You want it to fall on the floor and you want them to run to whatever base they can get to, okay? But if one of these people out here catches the ball like that, you're automatically out, okay? So, you, you, it's, it's harder than it looks. It seems more, but that's really hard to throw the ball, get it someplace where all these people on the outfield, because all this outfield cannot catch it, okay? And then your goal is to, you know, you run, and then you're on first base. And the next batter comes up, does the same thing, with the idea that then this person runs here, and they run here, until you get here, and then you score a point. You have to do it within three, three times, three strikes you're out. You, so the first person goes, let's say, they get here, the next person goes, okay? But if, for each person that's out, you only get three tries. So let's say if you make it here, and the third person is out, then that person never scores. So you can, you can sometimes have a person on each base, this person goes out, it's, it's very important to see how many, am I making sense right now? I have no idea. Yes, but yes. It's very important to see how many outs this team has. So if you have two outs, let's say, that means you only got one more shot to try to score, okay? So it's really exciting baseball. Let's say they, they call it bases are loaded. There's a player in each base. Mm -hmm. Person comes up. You have no outs yet. Well, then awesome. You're probably going to score because you still have three more chances for these people to hit the ball and get these people to home base. And so it's let's say a grand slam. Yeah. yeah. And let's say though you have two outs. You have no one on base. This person comes up. Uh, there's a chance he's going to score. There's a chance maybe he can get a home run, but the chances are slimmer. Does that make sense? But you do have a lot of time where people are filled with the base. This person goes out and you know strikes them out, and then no one scores. It happens a lot. So they switch back and forth, back and forth for nine innings. Okay, so it's a long game, a really, really long game. That's why a lot of people find baseball boring, which it can be. And I was telling him this honestly, and I'm just being honest. So this should be recorded. But when people go, a lot of people, it's a, it's a heavily drinking sport. And a lot of people, a lot of these games, they're drinking. But by nine innings, it's very boring. And a lot of people, honestly, in America, will go and drink beer. It's like, that's what everyone does. But anyway, you have nine innings. It's called the top and the bottom of each inning. OK? So basically, Home and away. Huh? Yeah. Home and away, is it? Like, for each sure. team. Sure. Yeah. So they have their purple team and red team. So let's say, this is the red team. This is Chicago, Chicago State. So they're going to go first. They're going to attempt three times to score. If they don't, then it's their turn to go out here, and these people try to bat. Then they do it. And let's say they strike out, then that's the first inning. And then so on and so forth until the ninth inning. Basically. That's it in a nutshell. OK. Yeah, so uh, yeah we, can, we can do a movie here. Even if there are men Baseball still on another, yes. <laughs> there are men called umpires who stay up all the time, and they yes. decide when the men who are in are out. And depending on the weather and the light, the umpires can also send everybody in, no matter whether they're in or out. When both sides have been in, and all the men are out, including those who are not out, then the game is finished. Wait a second, let's slow that down. We're going into a bit more detail here. This is what I learned about baseball from my friends. There are two teams that alternate between offense and defense. And like other games, each tries to score more points than the other. But in baseball, they don't call them points. They call them runs. And you score a run by completing one circuit of four bases, but only while on offense or at bat. It's called at bat because of the cylindrical piece of wood that players use to hit the ball. The thin bat begins to frustrate the batter as a three inches diameter ball with right stitching blows right past him. The baseball can be thrown anywhere from 80 miles per hour, approaching 100 miles per hour, and rarely on a straight trajectory. So who is throwing the ball at the offense batter? The defensive pitcher. He stands in the middle of a mound at the center of the diamond and he starts the action by throwing the ball towards home plate at his catcher. The catcher catches the ball and it is not hit. Each team has nine players in its batting order, and they must stick to that order throughout the game unless there are substitutions. A play begins with a batter waiting to hit a pitch from the pitcher. This swing and miss starts to become a pattern until the batter hits the ball. 
When the batter hits the ball into the field of play, the batter is then referred to as a runner. A batter gets a hit when he reaches the base without getting out or forcing another runner to get out. He runs from home base to first base. There are three more bases that he has to run, second, third, and then back to home. Runs are then scored when a runner makes it at home before there are three outs in the inning. If players hit the ball over the outfield fence, it's a home run, and the batter can circle all four bases without worrying about hustling or stealing bases or getting out. If there's a runner on all three bases, and the batter hits a home run, it's called a grand slam, because all four offensive players can run the bases and get a free trip home. So what about the defense? How do they stop these guys from scoring runs? A pitcher tries to get a batter out by throwing three strikes. First, a strike is a swing and a miss. Second, a strike is when a batter doesn't swing at a ball that flies over the plate through the strike zone. If the batter hits the ball in foul territory, it can be a strike, unless there are already two strikes. Then it's just basically a redo. And get this, if the catcher doesn't catch the third strike, if it goes past them, or they lose it out of their glove, then the batter becomes a runner, and can try to get to first base before the catcher finds the ball and throws it to the first baseman. Then he's saved, even though he struck out. Now, if the pitcher throws four balls, which means a pitch that is not in the strike zone, and the batter doesn't swing at them, the batter is automatically allowed to go to first base. There are a few other ways for the defense to get the offense out. First is the strikeout, which we've discussed, where the batter misses three pitches. Then there's a force out, when the ball is hit and the defense player gets the ball and reaches a base before the runner. Then there are flyouts, when a player hits the ball in the air and is caught by a defensive player before the ball hits the ground. And last but not least, there are tag outs, where the runner is touched with the ball or by a glove with the ball in it. Let me explain the field to you. The field is often called a diamond, though the field is actually more shaped like a cone. The part of the field closest to the bases inside the diamond is called the infield, and the grassy farther reaches is the outfield. The distance between each base is about 90 feet. The distance that an offensive player must run in order to reach the next base. The defense as infielders, who are the first baseman, second baseman, shortstop, and the third baseman, as well as the outfielders, the left fielder, center fielder, and right fielder. Nine players on the field in all. In professional baseball, there are nine innings, and each inning is divided in two. The top of the inning where one team is at bat, and the bottom of the inning where the team that was at bat grabs their gloves and goes into the field. Each team gets three outs in each half of the innings. After the bottom of the ninth inning is complete, the game is over and the team with the most runs wins. If the game is tied, it can go into extra innings. So there are a few unwritten rules. Baseball has its element of courtesy or sportsmanship. I really like this point. Please focus. <laughs> Never swing at the first pitch after back-to-back -back home runs. This is a matter of courtesy. This is, it's like, you will not like sweep your team, your opponent. If you, if you are like, you had two runs, like two home runs, you will not like make them like go out with zero. You will give them like a benefit of doubt. Like, we, we should wait to give you a possibility to, to get back to be around, okay? And it's unwritten. I see. Respect for a pitcher who is clearly struggling, offering just a sliver of daylight, a brief light of escape at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> when hit by a pitch, don't drop the mark. And don't and stand on the dirt cut out at home plate while the pitcher is warming up. Don't walk in front of a catcher or umpire when getting into the batter's box. Don't help the opposition make a play. No kidding, right? Follow the umpire's code when addressing them on the field. If a pitcher gets pulled, they should stay in the dugout, at least until the end of that inning. What is the dugout? I don't know. Is it like a red card? They are like out for a while? They are yeah. not allowed to come back to the game? Yeah. Pitchers should never show up their fielders. The list goes on and on, which is what makes baseball so popular and so mysterious to the outsider looking in. 
So that's what I learned about baseball my first time out. I don't know if I explained it well enough, but I took a swing at it. So this is much about, can about the game. Can I tell you about the event we're playing? So we're playing a baseball game for, well I'm going, but with the students as well. When it warms up, we're originally going to do it in May, but I'm really glad it's not in May, it's still freezing. But like June or July, we're going to plan a group trip to the White Sox. Mm -hmm. um, of course, whoever wants to come can come, but you guys should come because it's summer pastime here in America. And Anyway, we'll let you know when we're getting tickets and stuff like that. So that would be fun. I'd rather come. That would be something. That's it. Uh, how long? Is it, excuse me. Baseball game? Yeah, I mean, you say long, but how long? They're not all because it's nine innings, you know? So each team has three shots in each inning. So that can just take a long time, naturally. It depends. I mean, if no one's scoring, then it goes real fast. Um, but it's a low scoring game in general because, based on everything we just said, I mean, everyone, you can have bases can be loaded, everyone can be in a base, and then. You can still get three strikes and no one scores. So you have a lot of times where it's like the sixth inning, mm -hmm. people have been playing for hours, zero, one, zero, zero. That happens a lot. So it's not as exciting as, let's say, basketball, where it's really fast and points are constantly going up and down. It's not really like that in baseball. It can be. It's not often it's like that. But I would say a baseball game is like, I don't know, three and a half. Hours, maybe? Something like that? Yeah, because you don't have time. Like, you, you don't have a clock to, to kill. It's like no, there's no yeah. countdown for your attack or time. your defense. Yeah, it's not time. Yeah, so. It's not time. Um, and uh, the famous teams we have here are like are the uh, the Sox, which is in the south side, and the uh, Chicago Cubs. They have their home field is the Wrigley, the Wrigley Field, and it just turned out to be hundred year old now. Um, and the uh, the Cubs haven't won anything for the last 100 years. And, uh, They're terrible. Yeah, terrible. And the, uh, the White Sox, they won 2005, the World Series. This is the Wrigley Field. You have to go there and check it. Yeah, you'll have like the, uh, the 100 year souvenirs. Um, it's a bat and ball game, nine players, pitcher, the pitcher is the most important player, mm -hmm. catcher, and the batter, who, the guy with this thing, with the bat. Um, fielding and batting, that, and the home runs are, the most home runs you do is the, the most point you get, and you win. Uh, this is how, how it looked like. Um, I don't know if you can see, there's like, um, here. You can see here, like, th there is a bar, a huge mm -hmm. bar. It should be, like, one here and one there. So whenever the ball is is uh, is going behind these two, um, it, it's not ca count as, as a home run. or It would be, like, count as strike, foul. strike or ball. Yeah, yeah, or it could be a foul. Yeah, oh. it's uh, either or. But you should, like, kick the ball on that, on that direction to go up and away. Um, what is the most common injury? It's like no cats. Uh, the rotator muscle. Rotator cuff. Most likely it's the rotator cuff. But yeah, we have like the the other the other injuries. The other most common injury too is it's like the elbow injury. We have like medial, lateral, or sometimes posterior. But as any other sport, you have fractures. Someone hit by the ball. I got hit by a ball on. in the baseball game once when I was a kid. I had the face. The face oh. bleeding at the hospital. So just wanted to share. <laughs> Be careful. Huh? Pay attention. Be careful there. When you play basketball. When you play baseball. I got really hurt. <laughs> okay, the one and only Chicago Bulls. Uh, this is my favorite team since I was a child. So I know a lot about basket, but not that much. But and uh, it, it's well known for the uh, for the 90s. Um, they won six championships, championships with uh, Michael Jordan. Um, it was like there's a lot of drama and history there. Michael Jordan lost his father, and then he quit, and then he came back, and then he won again. And uh, everyone was doubting that he would come back, and it was just amazing. Like this is a chapter of 
of uh, Chicago history. It's not only his history, but it's for Chicago too. Um, well known too, Scotty Pippen. So don't tell me that Jordan was like, yeah, he is a superstar, but but Scotty Pippen was was one of the one one of a kind of player. Um, nowadays we have Derrick Rose, but I don't know why the picture is not there. Um, and uh, Joachim Noah uh, and uh, Taj Gibson. These are those are the famous player now, and they have like the most impact in the, in the team. Joachim Noah is the defensive player for the year for this year. Um, he made a lot of interception and steals, and uh, and he just earned it. Uh, defensive team and the and the NBA. So this is just like a video about like top ten plays on the uh, on the season, like on this season. This is a player. Ah, this guy? Yeah, this is uh, something green. Top ten plays, just to give you an idea about about how how fast is the game. They killed the clock. Uh, it's a buzzer beater, so that's why it's in the highlight. A buzzer beater. One tenth of a second, like only point one seconds left of the game, and he scores. a good, good move. Um, this is basketball. This is like the top plays. Uh, you have like an idea about like how fast is the game, how very competitive and you have like to be very tall. It's like three meters high hoop you have to catch and imagine a guy who is like very tall dunking it. It's like it would be like moving the crowd and you'll have like uh, the, com the, commentators, the commentators will be amazed with it too. Um, 
Does anyone have questions about how to play? I used to play basketball. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like five players, you have four quarters, three meter high hoop, and it's like less than half a meter uh, diameter. Uh, four quarters with, with plus overtime. Um, the overtime would be like when, when you have a tie. So never like a basketball game um, ended with, with a tie. Um, one, two, or three points. It's like when you get to the to the free throw line, when you get fouled, you'll get to the free throw line, and it's like it will be counted only one. But when you like it's it's not a foul. The game is on, and you throw it back from the three point line, anywhere back away from the three uh, three throw line, it would be counted like three. Anywhere beyond that, it would be two. Uh, and you get a chance to be fouled, and you get extra points. Um, and you have only 24 seconds to be the clock uh, for each attack. Mm, yeah, it's like the fouls are either offensive or defensive. It's like um, the courtesy of the player. If the player is standing there and you just uh, move straight to him, it would be like an offensive foul. If you are with the ball and you're attacking, this would be an offensive foul. This is, it took me a long time to understand that because I play soccer and never like you have a foul on the attacker or the guy with the ball. So uh, it's different here. Um, sometimes it's like a dribble when you don't dribble and it's a walk, so this is a foul too. Um, and sometimes there is a technical foul when you like shout in someone or say dirty, or, dirty talk or or something to be like technical. Even gestures, if you do any movement, like it would be, it would be considered a technical. Uh, this is how the uh, the uh, court is. Uh, so the three the three throw the three points line, free throw line, and and it's like two halves. No need for the majors. Injuries, most likely you'll have like ankle, ankle injuries, knee injuries. This is Derek Rose. He had like, this is the second time he got a knee injury. Um, D Wade uh, struggles with his back uh, years, uh, years ago. And uh, uh, Novisky, Derek Novisky. Uh, this is a German guy and he's a genius. This guy is a genius. Uh, but just to show that it's really common to have uh, finger uh, dislocations, digit dislocations. For say recap, all American sports are timed except baseball. 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 Uh, how many uh, stops per game? Which game? Which game? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. Yeah, there's no, no, no. Like, there's, for me, there's no limit for the stops. They can stop for anything. Play, player injury, uh, timeout. Um, there's like no count for specific count for any, for the stop per game. You have to expect like it would be like there is more often the uh, stops. Um, and uh, how long does it last? You don't know because of the stops. Who wins in baseball? The winner. It's runs. It's not. Yeah. It's it's yeah. It's it's runs. It's not points.